Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So hopefully in the last couple of videos, you learned everything you needed to know about manually interacting with smart contracts, which will enable you to hack these things and find vulnerabilities. Now, I also mentioned contract storage in the last video and we pulled storage out of memory from a private variable. And I said I would touch on this a little bit more. So this is gonna be one of those deeper dive videos where we talk about a topic and go a little more in depth so that you can have the understanding to find other vulnerabilities by knowing how things work. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Twitter in the description below and leave me a like and a comment if you learned anything from this video. I also like to see those because they give me ideas on new videos, sometimes when I get good feedback. So let's talk a little bit about what's on our screen. First off, we have our template from our last video, which gives us access to the contract via this target variable. And then we have our connection to the blockchain, just like the previous videos in this series with Ganache, which I already have running. The only thing you need to update is the address and the ABI of the contract we're looking at. So what contract are we looking at? Well, it's very, very simple to start. And then we're gonna make modifications so we can see the differences in how memory is handled, which will give you a deeper understanding of what's going on and help you find vulnerabilities in smart contracts. So we have a public message and it's a string. Then we have a private string named message two. These are both set to values in our constructor. Then we have a public function, which allows us to change our private variable message two with our in memory variable, my message. So the first thing to notice here is that we have memory variables here and we have storage variables. Now these storage variables persist with our smart contract and they're in slots in memory and we'll talk about those slots and what they are in a minute. The next thing to know is that this is a memory variable, which means that it only stays alive within this function between this and this, these two brackets. So this memory variable can change a storage variable, which will persist in memory, but the my message itself, which is the memory variable will go away. So that's the first thing to understand. The second thing to understand is the difference between public and private. So if we look at our contract right here, you'll notice that we can access message one, but there's no way to access message two. And that's because it's private. We can't actually access it. So that means the data is safe, correct? Well, not exactly. If we take a look at the code here, as we did last time, and we run this, you'll see that we can grab the value of hello because it's public, so let's do that, and we get hello. Now if we change this to one, this is private, so it should deny us, correct? Let's find out. And it doesn't, it grabs a private message and that's because we're grabbing it right out of memory. We're not using the contract to talk to it and say, hey, give us the private variable. We're just grabbing it out of the memory slot. So what does that look like? Well, on the blockchain, we kind of have like an array. And right here we have string one and we have string two in slot one, which is message one, slot two, which is message two. And these are 30 two bytes and 32 bytes, that's the default for a string. Now, because this is the first one declared here and this is the second one declared, means that it's slot one and slot two. If we declared another one down here, this would be slot three. So that's the first thing to understand. But now, what happens if we toss something else in here? So let's say we toss an array in here, let's do this. Before we look at what that does, I wanna show you one more thing though. If we take this decode off, what you're gonna see is, I'm gonna slip this back to one. Let's look at what that looks like first though. So we have hello, followed by all these zeros which take up the rest of that 32 bytes and then a new line. So although we only had hello there when we cleaned it up with that encode, all this other data is still taken up for that full 32 bytes. So that's something to think about. Now, we updated this with an array here, and this has the array nums, and it's a uint 256. So if we redeploy this, so we're gonna delete this one, and we're gonna deploy it, and then we're gonna grab the address because we deployed a new contract, we get a new address, so let's replace this. And now let's run this again. So we're gonna run this again on slot zero. 
And what are we going to see? Are we going to see the nums array? No, we only see one value there, even though it's a uint 256. So that's interesting. What happens if we grab slot one? And we get value two. So that's interesting. So that's slot one, that's slot two. And so if we look at our whiteboard here, we can see now nums up here fills in one, two, three, four slots. And that's our nums, right? So nums is across all four of these. And that's in slot one. And these are each that 32 wide or 256 across all of these. That's what that takes up. But now let's think about what happens if we change this to a uint eight, where we're only taking up one byte now, we're not taking up the 32. What happens with that? So I guess, you know, let's try it and find out. And this is how you learn these things. You just keep trying things and you figure out how things function. And that helps you hack things when things are a little weird. So let's copy that address. And let's paste this in here. And we'll take a look at what we got. So we're gonna grab again slot zero because slot zero, based on the previous thing we looked at, should be this first thing in the nums array and that should be the slot two, et cetera. So let's check it out. I'm gonna run this again. Oh, and that's interesting. So we got all of the values there. Now, why is that? Well, these are 32 bit or 32 bytes wide now. So instead of having it like this now, these are eight each, right? So eight, 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 which is actually one, 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 because 32 bytes is gonna be 32 of this ones across. So what we have now is we actually have one, two, three, and four, and we are packing them all into the same slot of memory because it can, because it has the space to do so, because we have 32 bytes in there, but we only have one byte things each within our array, which is pretty neat, right? So each of these are only taking up a very small portion, and now they actually are all slammed into that one slot. That's interesting. So what happens if we did something a little different? So that's one variable, that's the nums variable, but what if we did it a little different and we did it like this? What happens now? Let's think about what happens. We have uint eight, it only takes up a small portion, but these are each different variables. How does that affect it? Well, the best way to find out, like I will always tell you in the comments when you ask me something that literally just takes you doing something, is let's do it. Because if we do it, we get our answer and we don't need to ask that question, we can solve it ourselves, which gives us deeper understanding in both being self-sufficient as well as finding answers to questions that maybe somebody else can't even answer. So now we're gonna grab slot zero again. And what's gonna be in here? Is it gonna be all of those again? Or is it gonna be one? Well, it's all of those, it's all five, because again, we have 32 bytes within there and we only have one, two, three, four, five of those, so it filled up that whole first slot. So again, although each of these are a completely different variable, we now did the same thing again where we had this one right here. So I have one, two, three, four, and five, and these are totally different variables, but we slammed them all within one storage block. So the main takeaways from this video that I want you to understand is first off, Private doesn't mean anything because of the way the memory is in here and we can access all of these memory slots directly with Python. Private isn't private. So anything that's on the blockchain and is immutable, do not consider it private. We can either read it or we can pull it from memory. So that's the first thing to understand. The second thing to understand is that there are different size things and based on the size that they are, is where they are going to fit in memory and how they are gonna fit in memory. For example, since these are all small, these fit into one slot. But since this string is 32 bytes long and then this one is the 32 bytes long, these are in their own separate slots. Same when we use this uint256 here. So if we took this eight off here 
and we made this as a uint256 equals five. That should also change it as well. And we'll check that out as our last thing in here just to demonstrate the difference here. So let's deploy this again because I like to answer all those questions like just by doing rather than just, uh, you know, saying, oh yeah, I got that. Like, how do you know? Well, let's try it. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to hit this again. And right here we got one, two, three, four, five. But now, since that is a 256, it's one, two, three, four. But now, you know, once that's a one, two, three, four slot here should be only five, even though only five is there it's not gonna flow into any of these because these are 32. It's actually going to fill up that whole space because it's 256 bytes. So let's try that again, or 256 bits rather. So if we go one, let's give this a try. And all we get is five, right? So this is how memory works on the blockchain. Hopefully this kind of was enlightening and gave you some ideas and let you understand a little bit more about storage on the blockchain. This is just meant to be another one of those deep dive videos to understand a topic that is very, very important. We didn't really learn any new Python or anything here per se, but you got a lot better understanding on that, kind of like I did with the bytecode. You know, we got that deeper understanding on the bytecode and that is the whole point of this series. We're gonna learn how to use Python to do all the things. And as we go, instead of just learning how to do things, we also wanna get deep understanding because if we understand how they work, we can hack them. If we don't understand how they work, all we're doing is pressing button and guessing. So hopefully you guys learned something. Please leave a like and a comment and I'll check you in the next video. I think in the next video, we're gonna do some async programming and play with some events and learn some new things there.